Hi guys, Jessica Ansley here back at the studio. I would like to take the time to do a little tutorial for you on how to make super adorable and funny um, potted plants with our silhouette machine. And we start out with just a regular orange terracotta pot like this that I got from Walmart actually for 73 cents. But you can use any size, any type of um, terracotta plant. And then we're going to paint them and put cute little jute poured on them and paint them again with our silhouette. So I want to go ahead and take you through the process of doing that. Stay tuned. All right, so I like to use uh, 220 grit sandpaper on my terracotta just because it makes it nice and smooth or higher grit would work as well. Um, I sand out all the imperfections and all the flaws and and take care of as many as I can find. And then I wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. I like to use 91%. And I've recently discovered Heirloom Traditions thanks to a good friend of mine and it has changed my life. I will not use any other chalk paint if I can help it. Um, I do have only a few of their colors right now but I plan on getting more. So this is a la mode by Heirloom Traditions. It's a clay based chalk paint and it's very thick so it does need a good stirring but it covers nicely. I only had to do two coats on this terracotta plant or pot for my plant. I use a flat brush to apply that and I just paint all over the pot. Another great thing about Heirloom Traditions chalk paint is that it dries really quickly. Um, by the time I was on the other side of this pot painting, the other side was already dry, so I could go back and do the second coat right away. I didn't have to wait, which is really nice. Even though I was covering the top part of the uh, pot, I chose to paint that as well. And um, that way if I had anything showing through, if I didn't cover completely with my twine, I was able to still have a nice finish there for people to look at. It's not really necessary to paint the bottom, I just felt like it gave it a nice finished look. It's going to end up getting scratched and dinged and probably dirty with dirty uh, plant water, but I painted the bottom anyways. And then I painted the top lip or edge just to give it a nice finished look. Obviously you don't have to paint the inside because it's just going to be dirty with plants anyways. So next I plugged in my hot glue gun. I have a mini hot glue gun and I use little dots of hot glue every inch or so. And I would do a dot and then pull my twine over. I would already started it so you guys could see that. And then... At first I tried using Mod Podge, that didn't really work, so I switched over to the hot glue and that seemed to work a lot better. You use strips of hot glue, um, when you put your twine down it'll end up spreading and it'll look really really bad. I found that out the hard way, this is my second pot that I did, so I ended up using just the little dots of hot glue and you know filling in spots here and there if need be and kind of just rolled it there and then I kind of waited to, for it to dry a little bit and kind of smoothed it, the dot across the rest of the twine. This part took the longest and it took the most patience as well.
Next, I got my vinyl stencil ready. I cut it with my vinyl machine. I used a Silhouette Cameo for this. And I cut out my vinyl and then I used my X-Acto knife to weed it. Save you the time of watching me weed. And then I grabbed my transfer tape. I used Transfer Right, I believe it's called. Wow. And I applied my transfer tape to my decal or my stencil. I burnished really well. And then I applied my stencil to my pot. You want to make sure you line it up really well. Unfortunately, vinyl on curved edges tends to curve upward, such as like mugs and stuff. Um, I'll be making some designs that make sure that they don't do this. And I will post the link below. Where you can find those. I didn't take the time to do that with this one, so it did curve up a little bit at the end. I used some more black chalk paint and another flat brush to, uh, it was a smaller flat brush to fill in my stencil. Thing you want to remember when doing this um, is to remove your stencil right away. If you don't, you will end up having some of your paint peel up sometimes, depending on what type of stencil and what type of paint you're using. Um, I found it was pretty easy just to pull it off right away. I did end up accidentally touching my white spot, so I had to refill. Um, white spot and cover that up. Once I got to my middle section for all my little letter middles, I used my X-Acto knife to extract those from my pot. Pretty simple. Sometimes you can use tweezers if you don't want to get paint on your fingers, which I often do. Today I was just in a hurry to try to get this recorded for you guys. So I just used my fingers and my X-Acto knife. I have a really nice weighted X-Acto knife, so it's really comfortable to use and has pretty sharp edges for me. So after that, I had to cover it up. I grabbed my Heirloom Traditions paint again and my flat brush and just covered up the little spot that I had. After you are finished painting, you can let it dry, um, and then you can put your plant in there. I used a basil plant for this one, and I took off the wrapper and the um, like the cardboard particle thing, and ended up just putting my dirt right in there. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple. Here's the finished product. And there's one other one that I wanted to show you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're watching this on YouTube.